In example one, we did A and B. We didn't quite do C. So just a recap of what we did so far. We had the blue function, which was a line, and the red function, which was an absolute value. We did the domain and range for both in A. And then in B, it said, write them as an explicit equation when you add them together. And so all an explicit equation is in terms of x only. And this one's really easy, that you could write x plus 2 plus the absolute value of x. We graph them. So we graph the blue equation, which was the line, the red equation, which was the absolute value. And we took points and added them up. So the next thing that I wanted to do in part B before we went on to part C was to write h of x as a piecewise function. And I just did piecewise functions with the grade 11s yesterday, so I'm like, yes, you have seen this before. So. So you did piecewise functions in grade 11 with absolute values. Because an absolute value can be represented just by the absolute value of x, right? And that's how we normally just write it. Or you could write it as two pieces, because the absolute value is really just made up of two different lines joined together. And a piecewise function is just writing each piece separately and then restricting the domain for each piece so that you know which one's which. So one of the things we started to look at yesterday is if we broke up the absolute value graph into its pieces, then this section of the green graph would be the blue graph, which is x plus 2. And the equation of the red graph here is just x. And if I put x plus 2 and x together, that green line would be 2x plus 2. And then this section of the green line is still my blue line, which is still x plus 2 because it never changes. But now my red line, if I would say, what's the equation of that red line or that part of the absolute value graph? It would be negative x. And if you add x plus 2 and negative x together, you just get y equals 2. So writing h of x as a piecewise function would look like this. h of x is equal to, well, in the one piece, it's just the straight line of 2. When does that happen? When x is less than or equal to 0. Can you see on the green graph that it's always equal to 2 whenever it was less than or equal to 0? And when it went bigger than or equal to 0, then our equation was 2x plus 2, when x is bigger than 0. So that was a review of piecewise functions from grade 11. Mm -hmm. It's like one question in one lesson at one time that really doesn't ever get asked on exams or in reviews or on tests. So did you learn it? Mm. Maybe you saw it in passing. But whether you learned it or not, that's another thing. It's not a super hard concept, though. It's just when you have something that can be broken up into pieces, then you can figure it out by looking at the pieces separately. And sometimes that can be really helpful, because now we're going to look at part C, which says, let's multiply our functions together. Ooh. What happens if I move that? Oh, I like that. I'm going to move that one. OK. I'm going to redraw all these graphs. No, that didn't work. Here we go. Redraw that. Redraw that. And redraw that one. 
Okay. So now if we had these graphs and we wanted to multiply them, again, we multiply the y values. So some of the points that are nice to multiply were wherever one of the functions was 0. Because if the red graph is 0, 0 times 2 will be 0. And if the blue graph is 0, 0 times 2 would be 0. We can take some other points. Can you see that this one, you'd have 1 times 1? And here, when the red value is 1 and the blue value, you'd have 1 times 3. And so you could take more points and then say, hmm, I guess I think I know what might be happening. It looks like this part would just keep going down. Why? Because the blue graph is negative and the red graph is positive. And a positive times a negative will be a negative number. And they both seem to be getting bigger and bigger, so my value should be getting to be a bigger and bigger negative number. And here it looks like it should just keep going up. Now the shapes of those graphs, I drew them correctly because I know what's going to happen, but this is a good place where if you wrote the piecewise function, you might see better what's happening. So for p of x, there's two pieces. There's the blue graph multiplied by the red graph when it's less than 0. When it's less than 0, my blue graph was x plus 2. My red graph is negative x. And that's what it is when x is less than or equal to 0. And when x is bigger than 0, well, my blue graph is still x plus 2. And now my red graph is just x. Generally, as well in the grade 12 course, they tend to put these questions where you don't have to do the piecewise functions either. They generally just do two equations that you can just plug in. But if I do simplify these equations, p of x would equal, this one becomes negative x squared minus 2x. What kind of graph is that? Parabola. This is when x is less than or equal to 0. That's a parabola that would have x-intercepts at negative 2 and 0. Does that parabola open up or down? Down. Can you see that the shape that I drew looks like a parabola opening down, but only part of it? And if I multiplied the other one together, I would get x squared plus 2x. which is a parabola that opens up. This one would also have x-intercepts at negative 2 and 2. In fact, this is the parabola that it would make. And I drew it in a dotted line because which part of the parabola do we have? We only have this section here when x is bigger than 0. So what a piecewise graph does is it says, imagine the whole graph there, but then just graph the piece that you need. So if I had x squared plus 2x, that's what I drew with the dotted blue line. That's the whole parabola. But I'm only supposed to graph the part where x is bigger than 0. So I only have that little section. So you might decide that actually figuring out the piecewise equation would be an easier way to graph it rather than just doing 100, well, you wouldn't have to do 100, but a bunch of points and just multiplying them together. Both will work. OK, determine its domain and range. Once you've drawn the graph, you can see easily that the domain is everything and the range is everything. Same thing in B, once you've done the graph, you can see the domain is everything but the range 
is bigger than or equal to 2. All right, questions for practice are 3, 5, and 10.